Let's see if we can get this guy out here in a little boat, see if he comes closer at all. I picked it up so it was out of the grass. Let's try this over here too, guys. Let's try this over here, see what we get. These little docks. See the boat is right up in that area right there. And do one vertical too. Let's do this gentleman fishing right here. Make sure the GoPro is recording. And it is. All right, so here we go, guys. Get it right. Go ahead and get it right in the center of the trees here. And we're pretty much going to have to max everything out. Stop down to 22 and uh, 1,000 shutter speed because we're pretty much right towards the sun right now. See how this looks. Well, let's see if we can get close to this bird right here. Oh, 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 dang it. I should just go for it. I don't know if that's gonna turn out. Okay, this one's saying F16, so I'm gonna drop down to F16. And What else we got let's see what else we can do here like i said we just need to fire some shots off so all right let me see right here let's see what we got f8 500 hopefully i'm focused all right here let me try one more of this one here It's awesome looking. Yeah, I'll try to get the sun in the, in the reflection there. Let's see how that looks. Got to try to get this done before everybody wakes up. It's going to be real noisy in here. So we'll just do a quick dry up here. We're going to use the uh, dark bag here to get the film loaded into this Patterson tank. And that's a light sealed tank. So once you get the film in there, once you get the film inside of here on the reel, right here, we drop it into the tank and then we can pull it out of the bag and then it'll be protected from the light and we'll use the chemicals to develop the film. So then you're gonna drop this down out here. You're gonna put the lid here and you lock that lid. Now you're able to take it out of the bag like that. I'm just gonna go for it, guys. Here's what the bag looks like. It looks like kind of like a shirt. You're just going to uh, put your stuff on the inside here. Okay. There's a zipper inside of here. Bought this off Amazon too. I'll also put the link in the description for this as well. So set your Patterson tank in there. Don't forget any of the parts because once you get in there, you're kind of stuck. I'm gonna go ahead and use a bottle opener. I can't find scissors right now, so uh, this shouldn't be a problem to just peel off on my hands uh, if, if need be, or I will need to, but shouldn't be a problem. So I'm gonna throw that in the bag. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid just because uh, it makes me feel comfortable. Zip up the bag. Okay, zip it up nice and tight. Then also has a uh, Velcro here on the end that you fold over. Once you go in, guys, uh, you pretty much, once you get it unwrapped, you've, you've got to do the job. So sometimes it takes a minute, sometimes it takes 30 minutes. So just be prepared for that. So there's a double, there's double elastic. You have one here and then there's one on the inside of the bag too. So the further you stick your arms in there, the kind of actually, it's pretty tight. So it digs on your arms. So we got it on. 
All right. So here we go. Let me take everything out and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's the, uh, you can see how the bag does to your arms right here. It digs in pretty, pretty tight and I have pretty, uh, pretty thin arms. So, um, you can imagine if you stand in there for, you know, a half hour, an hour, which I've done, it can really uh, squeeze in on your arms pretty tight. But because the film was still sticking out here when I popped the ends off, um, well, I guess I could have, but I wasn't sure if it, if it was clipped right here. So I didn't pull it off the end. I rewound it inside and then slid it out. But seeing this like it is now, I could have just slid, I could have just slid it out. So there's that. Here's our tank now, it's good to go. Like I said, we can we don't have to have the lid on it because this, this portion right here that's locked in is what keeps it light sealed. And there's the bottle openers. Here's the here's what the inside of the spool looks like on the inside of the film, right? So once you pop those ends off, just pull the film out. I set the film down. I set the film down and it loosely just unwinds right here. And then I just pull the spool up in the middle so I can grab that so I can grab it and peel it off here. And then I just start working with that inside. Like I said, it, that way it just goes on here easier. Here's the tape that holds the film on to the spool inside. So that's it. That's all there is to it. So um, let's get to the chemicals to temperature and get to developing. So I just did the pre-soak. Um, went ahead and just filled it up with water, let it set for a minute, dumped it out. That's where we're at now. We're on to the development stage. Temperature needs to be 102 degrees Fahrenheit, which uh, we are at 102. So I've just put them in this uh, in this big pan, my, my bottles, and have let them set while I was working on the film and whatnot. So we need to develop for three and a half minutes. And uh, right here, we're gonna uh, continue us for the first 10 seconds. We're gonna agitate. Then four lifts, four inversion cycles every 30 seconds. So we agitate it for the first 10 seconds. And um, now we need to do every 30 seconds. I wanna make sure I pour my developer back into, back into here, cause you can reuse it. I'm gonna pour that right back in here. Now guys, a lot of people recommend you use gloves, so. Uh, this is the first time I've actually got any on my hands doing it because I'm recording it so I'm not as conscious of everything I'm doing here thinking about the recording. I got the development out of it. So we're going to do blicks but now we're going to we got to go for eight minutes. It's also at 102 degrees or somewhere in that realm. That is at eight minutes and now this one gives you the option to be at 75 degrees to 105. So we're within that range right there, so. You can let it soak for about three minutes or you can fill it up and empty uh, seven times, which I just pretty much go until, until it's clear. I'll do at least the seven times on it. At this point, guys, it is safe to go ahead. It is safe to go ahead and uh, take this lid off. We could literally just make sure you're rinsing that film off real good, all the chemicals off of it. This one says agitate for 15 seconds, and I think it's just like a soap. Looks like just kind of some soapy water, but not exactly sure. But I'm just going to put enough in there to fill that up. I think this this step right here keeps it from getting um, like water spots on it. Okay, so now I'm just going to peel the film off and see what we get. Let's see what we get here. Hopefully we got some images. If we don't, this video will never see the light of day. So, okay. Oh, oh, we do have some images, guys. And uh, just go over a couple of the basics with you real quick. One is uh, you want to have a little blower so that you can clean the film off, get all that dust off so that it'll save you some time in editing. 
Uh, I've got a light pad here I bought off Amazon for about 20 bucks and a very inexpensive 35 millimeter uh, film holder here. I like this particular one because it has these pieces in between the negatives and it holds the negatives real flat so I really I really like that. You want to have a macro lens so you can get as close to the film as possible. You want to level off the camera and use manual focus so I zoom in and manual focus and actually focus in on the grain of the film and then you could just fire your shots off so once you're focused you could take a shot move your film line it up take your next shot so on and so forth so it's a very inexpensive easy setup and for me it's pretty much what I'm using now and it works so it's got the uh, got to set up on this tripod I did buy this particular tripod so that it would extend out over the counter like this and make it easy for me uh, what else can I add here I did do one other thing which is this is I don't know if it's necessary or not I've scanned without it so it doesn't matter but I took the box that the light pad came in and cut a hole through it and that way when I put the when I put it over top of the of the light pad it blocks out all the light and one other thing I do is I turn out the actual lights in the house and then that way you can just literally just make sure you're getting no no light except for what's coming through the negative there and that's working out for me just fine so I don't think that's 100% necessary but it does work uh, for me it takes an extra second to stick it over but it's not that big of a deal so here's the setup let me know if you have any questions guys I hope this video helped someone out if it did do me a favor and hit that like button if you want to see more from us hit the subscribe and the bell you know what to do on all this stuff if you have any questions let me know below, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.